Long ago, two great generals led mankind in a terrible war. The dreaded Void Dragon threatened all of existence. The two generals were celebrated as the rulers of all, and even the gods paid them tribute. Hey, welcome back everybody to Lakula Forest. Alright, so we're supposed to be looking for the White Witch's Cabin, uh, which Arhu told us, I believe he said it was to the east. Must be heading off in this direction. Uh, but before we do that, it looks like we may have a town over here, so I wanted to check that out. It'd be good if we had kind of a trading hub set up for us. Uh, we can always go back to Sicil anytime we want, but let's just look around and see what we can find. Can I reach that? Apparently you can. <laughs> what do we got here? Rogue Earth Elemental. Level 9. Level 10. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into a fight early on. Why not? Okay, that was a good start on their part. We also have evil smelling flowers. Alright, so this one needs to go away. Alright, what can we find out about um They're weak to air? That's Easy enough, I guess. Let's see if we can't just take care of both of them. Right off the bat here. Without hitting ourselves. I am an arrow, yet fire a storm! Alright, they are both stunned. That's good. Uh, Chloe's going to investigate these for us. Good hit. Alright, Chloe, what do we got here? They have a decent amount of HP. They can do some damage. They're weak to fire. Strong to poison. Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and delay real quick. Try to get your hand up. And next we'll hasten you and then wait. That's what we wanted to get. Okay, so Chloe can get in there with those guys. And let's see if we can't use a... We'll get over here and try to use our staff on those flowers. Get a fire staff, or wand, I mean. Kiss of the serpent. Okay, that hurt a lot. Well, that got us in there. The weakest is slashing. They don't have any strength to our thing, so we're good there. Yeah, let's just keep hitting away here. We need to cure you. I'm not going to be able to do. Should have done that. Slashing, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and switch out. All 
All right, they spew out poison. That's good to know. Okay, we need to heal Jahan. I can't have him dying on me. Not quite. Gotcha. And other than that, you're about spent. Okay, you've got to have a fire staff ready for this. Wand. I keep saying staff. I mean wand. There we go. Uh, not amazing damage. Let's try to take out this guy here. Uh, good damage. Blind failed. They're still stunned, so... Oh, they're like mortars. Hey, what is that? <laughs> okay, we got a shambling oak out of nowhere. Heal her. I need you to finish this guy off. I'll be kind of a waste of it, but... 100%. Alright, Chloe. Uh, let's see. What do we got going on here? Damage is pretty high. It's weak to fire. Crushing. Crushing fist. Immune to knockdown. Got to get Medora involved here. Not so fast. Nice. Yeah, Medora, this is all you. Good hit. Okay. It's our most pressing concern, maybe. Uh, not anymore, it's not. We don't have any good fire scrolls, really. One of the things we are lacking... Let's just heal Chloe. Poisoned again. Well, that's good. All right, Davith. We gotta get you a shot, my friend. I might not have. This probably wasn't enough. That's all right. These things need to burn. Here we go. Uh, yeah, let's get this going so we can start hitting. Okay, good hit. Try to drain a little bit from him. Kiss of the night walker. I thought you were gonna be able to take it take it down. You, you failed me. 
Uh, we could use adrenaline. We're not going to. Let's encourage everyone. Into the fray once more. Uh, finish this. These things have a lot of health. Alright, Devith took that pretty well. That one hurt. It would hurt even more. That one's done. Burning and poison. Okay. Let's take our 100 percent shots. Chloe. Uh, yeah, I don't need to do that. Seven, have mercy on your soul. All right, one little flower to go. Medora, go ahead and give that to Jahan. There we go. All right. My life is ebbing away. Your life's okay. You'll live. All right, it wasn't as easy as I thought. That's what I get for being cocky. Regroup. Uh, can you cure that from Chloe? Damon, good. No. Doesn't matter at this point. When has any heals up? There we go. As good as a new penny. On the mend. Yeah, good. Walk right through that, Jahan. It's fine. Bunch of eyes. Alright, now let's go to that town. Initiate. What's up, buddy? In the name of the goddess, halt! Who goes there? What do you have for sale? Some amulets. We have one of those, don't we? Or no? I guess we don't. Uh, a source hunter. In that case, you can rest easy, hunter. There is no source to be found here. Only the glory of immaculate. Well, what is this place? Why, it's Silver Glen, of course. Once the abode of miners, now the abode of the faithful. We have traded the search for silver for the pursuit of divinity. I'm sure this sounds strange in what our strangers' ears, but you must know that but a short while ago, a frightful sickness felled us by the dozen until she who speaks for the goddess brought us a cure. Did she? Did this cure come in the form of a uh, stone? She showed us how we may overcome the frailty and even the decrepitude of our mortal bodies. That is why we now live a life of devoutness and civility, so that we may become immaculate. But I suggest you talk to Father Loik if you want to learn more about the ways of the goddess. Be welcome, therefore, to Silver Glen. Blessed be all immaculates. All right, thanks. So Silver Glen is where... Um I wouldn't trust these sentries to guard a pig pen. Keep alert, comrades. There's something fishy about this place. <laughs> uh, Evelyn came from. The Immaculates here seem to be a friendly enough bunch. Seem being the operative word. Let's remain vigilant. Let's see what Jahan wants. The degenerates here claim they have been cleansed. 
but I can still smell the stink of persisting putrescence wafting from their grimy flesh. Silver Glen, this place sickens me. I see no evidence of sickness about me. Why take it? Why take it to heart so? As you know, I once carried the burden of disease upon emaciated shoulders. Perhaps I had better explain in greater detail. Uh, okay, tell me more about your history, Jahan, if you please. So I shall. Uh, we don't need to start at the beginning, do we? No. Basically, ah, screw it. Let's hear the whole story, because I know I don't remember that much. Once upon a time, I was a king in a land of beauty to the east. A land of tigers and slender towers, of deserts and forests, of sun and all the world's wealth. I was a young king, handsome and all-powerful. Every nobleman would have killed his own brother if I promised to take his daughter's hand in marriage. But I refused their incessant implorations. I knew my life as a sovereign would be self-indulgent, but also a self-delusory one, if I weren't to marry for love. And so a handful of years went by. The king's throne I myself occupied, whereas the queen's throne remained empty but for the court's cats that would nap the afternoons away upon its velvet cushions. But then one day, a young woman visited my kingdom. She was a poetess and a storyteller. People flocked to her, listened to her every word as if receiving mantras from the divines. I invited her to my palace, and soon our days, our nights, our love and our lives intertwined. Can you tell me more about your lover. Hiraka. How I miss her still. Miss the brilliance of her mind that was both as sparkling and as unbreakable as the diamonds that adorned her body. Oh, and how I miss her body. A thousand artists I could have commanded show me beauty. But she would have effortlessly surpassed their every endeavor and curving her lips into a smile make them break their sculptures in tearful impotence. And yet, true happiness, that commodity more precious and even more fleeting than the dominion of kings, sang to us like the nightingale only to depart come the dawn of our first year's unity. A malady overtook me, and I began to wither. Okay, I believe this is where it's going to all be new to us. Uh, tell me about the malady that overtook you. It was an unparalleled horror. Scores of physicians flocked to my bedside. They traveled from realms across the seas hoping to cure the mighty Jehan undo the gloom that had befallen the land and mere vultures that they were to be paid handsomely for their efforts but none of their potions took effect their salves seared but did not soothe my fading flesh like a ghoul i looked unburied yet risen from the grave in futile anger, I struck my mirror, but broke my brittle fingers only, not its ever-mocking surface. Okay, well, how did you manage to cure yourself from the malady that afflicted you? It went like this, Hunter. If a ghoul I had become, so a dark turn of thought convinced me, a ghoul's methods I should employ to escape the labyrinthian crypt of corporeal corruption. A necromancer I'd be. Yes. Only from deep within the deliriums of death would I tunnel my way back into the gardens of life. I did unspeakable things in the dusky dungeons that twist like forgotten veins to long-deceased organs far beneath my castle's sunlit halls. Halls which held my throne and held the bed upon which Heraka slept, her very touch blessing the satin she reposed upon. Still there came no relief. Perversions I created in scores, but they were mere undead all. Creatures so piteous that the thought of cheating death in their guise frightened me more than the swing of the scythe itself. Like mosquitoes in the night, panic and despair beset me until I turned to that darkest of all arts, 
Demonology. So you of all people turned to demonology. It had to be. There was no other way. I could feel the life slipping out of me like love out of a betrayed spouse's heart. So I studied tomes so old the dust that fell from their centuries unperused pages never knew the light of the stars that now shine. I drew forbidden symbols. I spoke unhallowed words. And from the smoke that rose like a dragon's last breath, a demon appeared to me and said, Ask, O blighted king, and you shall have. Just tell me, I cried. Tell me what ails me. What was its answer? Hiraka. Never had I known a single word can cut deeper than the sharpest of daggers. With maddening glee, the demon told me she was one of his kin. A soul-swallowing horror that had been feeding on both my body and my spirit like a leech. An ancient being was she, that moved from king to king throughout the ages, filling their hearts with love, then draining them of life. After such revelations, does one truly desire to live on? Death seemed like a mother then, welcoming me with her all-will-be-well embrace. Yet still I feared exceedingly her seemingly sweet caress and the oblivion that would follow. Release me from her demon and give me back the strength of a sick free existence. So went my desperate plea. It smiled, of course it did. Smiled bare a hundred razors as its eyes came alight with infernal fire. A thousand years I will give you, it whispered. But then your soul shall be mine to incarcerate in the depths of hellish nemesis. As for your throne, that I'll have now. What say you, O brittle king? Do you accept my terms? And did you? I think you know the answer to that question, Hunter. But I've said enough for now. These memories are painful to recollect. So let us turn to the rest of them later. All right, I'll take my leave. Good. No use in standing about. All right, so we get a little insight into why Johan is so uh, jaded. Um, yeah, basically the woman he loved was a succubus, sucking the life out of him. And then he gave up his throne and his soul to be able to live for a thousand years. Let's see what Chloe thinks about that. Well, well, well. So our very own demon hunter once dabbled in the so-called darkest of arts himself. A man so utterly betrayed and dying will grasp at any straw. I can hardly blame him. But I can. No matter the circumstance, I simply cannot abide a hypocrite. Uh, I don't fault you there, Chloe. I really don't. I don't. Okay, let's check out the village. Uh, so they mentioned the name. Over here, Hunter. Loik. It's me, Ahu. We meet again, Ahu. Uh, we read a name from Loik somewhere. I want to say it was one of Thelerons. Oh, we. This boss is as well. We're supposed to deliver. It's me, Ahu. I guess we won't read it. We'll we'll be. Nice. I'm not sure, but Loik is the head guy in the city, and we did find a letter about him. Here, or at least referencing him, or oh. from him. Source Hunter. You've made it into the hamlet of Silver Glen, I see. Unnerving spot, don't you find? Leandra has fashioned herself a hero here. But the townsfolk don't seem to know the truth behind the conduit, though they call themselves immaculates. Uh, do I need to sell you anything? Don't need that. Let's just continue on here. What do you make of these immaculates? 
They're thick as trout, if you ask me, and unnaturally obsessed with ancient teachings. I haven't seen Leandra here myself, but she must have put on quite a show of magical mastery to enthrall a crowd of shaggy miners, to have them hop on the bandwagon of a shadowy religion wholly alien to them. Okay, well, what ancient teachings do you mean? Haven't you heard them whisper of the blood? How their eyes shine when they discuss certain stellar stones? Star stones, of course, which drenched in blood become blood stones and are used in healing rituals. Actually, I haven't heard them whisper of anything yet. I just got here. Now, I can see how it could be a fantastic thing to nurse a dying human back to health if all it takes is to sacrifice a toad. But I spy bloodlust in these people's eyes. A bloodlust that goes beyond the usual meaning of the word. They all act like they're following a benign goddess that will lead them to paradise. But I'll be a dappled Dalmatian if any of that is true. <laughs> okay, well since you've been scouting the place, perhaps you can tell me where I should start looking for shady goings on. I've been shadowing the local priest. A man by the name of Loik. I have the feeling he knows more than most in Silver Glen, for I've followed him in the night when he meets with cloaked strangers, and goblins even. Goblins, huh? Mangoth, Hyberheim, of strange things I've heard him whisper. Yes, this priest has shady goings-on written all over that smug, holier-than-thou face of his. But we must start at the beginning, Source Hunter. The White Witch is still at large. If we want to get to the true heart of Leandra's doings, we must start with her sister. And she's far likelier to be in her cabin among the trees than here among Leandra's followers. Okay, well, why are you walking about Silver Glen in your cat form? The advantage of being a puss, my friend, Don't call yourself is that, that one can pussyfoot. Mm. A white-haired wizard draws attention, but a cat can move about unnoticed and, indeed, unseen. Not that I'm not extra wary of these bloodsuckers, though. There's a conspicuous absence of pets in this eerie little town. Uh, wouldn't that suck if they thought you were a real cat and sacrificed you over a stone? Because they were just like, oh, it's just a cat. <laughs> the Immaculate's presence here is highly disconcerting. But we mustn't lose sight of our mission, Source Hunter. The White Witch resides somewhere in the wilds of the surrounding forest, and we must find her. Alright, so he's basically chastised me for even being here. Find the witch. Okay, Eastern Woods. Cat Wizard are who advises to... Yeah, got it. Um, I was hoping there was people here that sold stuff. Actually, I think it's right here. We may actually just go to the woods. I don't need to skip parts of the story and jump ahead. Gonna open up this chest though. For Medora, I'm gonna sell a bunch of stuff here to sell, really. And a pouch. So we could actually open up. That we could store stuff in the pouch if we wanted. Uh, nice clawed earth wand. Thirty-nine to sixty-five. Thirty-seven to sixty-one. This one doesn't do much for us. This one gives us. We can mute people. Yeah, I'll keep the chance to mute. I guess we'll just sell this one. Uh, send... Medora, you take that strength potion. Trap arm kit. Hammer. Shield's gonna be garbage. Oh, another one for the collection. What is this thing? It's a rather large sheet of paper.
String Enthusiast Volume 3. Hey, we found a new one. Okay, uh, mixing poison with certain objects can produce an elixir powerful enough to affect a particular attribute of an intended victim. A tooth dissolved with a strong poison, for instance, will leach the strength from a man's arm in an instant. Uh, it would be difficult to pour such a concoction down his throat during combat, but coating an arrowhead can deliver a dose of poison straight to the target. The fumes released upon contact will deliver the poison just as effectively. So if I take teeth and mix it with Poison, I can get poison arrows, is what I'm guessing. Debuff and debuff strength. Really? But do I already know how to create poison arrows? Oh. Well, it's not teeth, that's an arrowhead. Got it. Okay. Oh, that's one we didn't know. Can't reach. Well, that's no bueno. Can't move it. I mean, it's just a basket. It's probably not that important, but... Well, maybe we can reach it now. No. That's fine. That is fine. We're gonna break into these people's room. Because they can't see us. And we're assholes. We also have a locked trap door. He who smelt it, volume four, the cellar key. Nice. Now this is valuable. Uh, we don't have volume four. Uh, it may take some practice, but once you've got your iron bar out of your iron ore, you can make it even stronger by turning it into steel. That's right. All you need is a forge, an iron bar, and some craftsmanship, of course. Can't learn that from reading a book. It didn't teach me how to... I mean, it taught me how to do it, but it didn't tell me. It's not an object. What is it? This iron bar. Where's steel bar? Oh. Maybe I didn't see it before. Seven iron bars into one steel. Okay. It's not something I ever would have figured out. Right, I'm ready to check out their cellar, actually. The little guy. about Lawrence, but until she has proof, whispers they'll remain. All right, we'll have to talk to Nadia about her suspicions of Lawrence, whoever the hell that is. Fun with fluids, volume two. That one we know already. Meteor Strike Scroll. Okay, well that goes to Jahan. Care about beer. Uh, yeah, we'll take water. I don't need milk. Ch 
chain lightning, that's... Uh, actually, yeah, Jahan can hold that. We'll keep the blank one. It's a mastery level spell. It's actually pretty good to just find. Mercy Giver. It's cool that it's named. Can't really do much with it, but... Vintage Claymore. I can sell that. Alright, we are done here, right? Alright, let's go visit the shop. See what we can actually sell. Welcome to Nadia's shop. Rot stricken. Stay out. CB. Hello and welcome to our shop. I am the son of the proprietor, Nadia. Please let us know how we can help you. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff for sale. Let's get some more lock picks. I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff here. Um, that's not weak. <laughs> Let me look at that first. There's nothing special about it, though. But... I don't remember if I was holding on to this for a reason. I think I mean to equip it. Okay. That'll do. Tell me about yourself. You've probably noticed that my mother Nadia and I aren't from around here. No. We traveled rather far from our hometown to plant new roots here in Silver Glen. My father, Ben, his death was somewhat mysterious. And we've traced the puzzle back to this little settlement. My mother will have plenty to say on that subject, if you're interested. Okay, well tell me about Nadia. Ma's a bit intense, to be sure. Set in her ways, but fiercely loyal to the family. Help her out, and you've got a friend for life. Cross her, and you'll be better off skipping town. Not that that will stop her from cursing your line for the next thousand cycles of Bendis. Okay, what about your father? My father was a good man. Equal in character to his wife. His death nearly destroyed us, Ma and me. But now we're here. And we won't leave until we've held the proper parties accountable for their role in his death. Well, they're playing the long game. They came in and set up shop, huh? Alright, let's see if we can speak to Nadia. Farma Maldanita! A source hunter in Silver Glen. I have traveled mile on top of mile to find help. And now help has, uh, how you say, appeared from skinny vapors. Okay. I don't know what she's actually intending to say there, but I get the gist of it. Um, we're not going to buy any armor or anything. Tell me about yourself, Nadia. My story. Well, this is no small tale. I think perhaps you will be more interested in the... How you say it? The short end of stick. Okay. I believe Lawrence, the leader of Mining Guild, tell my husband and many of other workers to mine deadly ore called Tenibrium. Lawrence knew that this ore caused rot. Charming name, no? Yet ordered the miners to continue. Many men, my Ben among them, become the sickness. And now they, how you say, kick down the bucket. But the sickness... It is not normal. It kills swift and terrible, not unlike Source. My son Sebi and I travel from our home to find truth, but this has proven not so easy. Okay, well, what can you tell me about your husband? My sweet little Pomargo Visago, my darling Ben. We got along like, how you say, uh, peas and ferrets, but... He here there is work, very well paid, in mines, clearing special rock from Silver Mine. So, he leaves Sebi and I to come to Silver Glen. We wait with hearts like stones for some months. 
And one day, we see familiar figure moving with strange steps on path toward cottage. We run to meet him and take him into our arms, but he collapses at our touch. We help him inside and set him to rest. But he was in terrible condition. Each hour he grow worse, rot so fast we hardly recognize him after two short days. He slip away from us, and we bury him with much grief. Okay, that sounds pretty terrible. Uh, what about your son, Sebi? When his father die, Sebi become restless. Being of the age, he join army and go straight to front line. Though I was nearly old woman, I joined army as healer to be near and look after my boy. There we saw special legionnaire using strange weapon. And this legionnaire soon come to my tent with the same disease that killed Ben. I discovered the tenebrium ore in this weapon. It was the ore that killed them both. I come to Silver Glen to discover truth, and here I find Lawrence, that arrogant man, conducts his business without apologize to any. So you need help proving Lawrence knowingly encouraged the miners to handle Tenebrium. Exactly this. Please, Swords Hunter, you must help me prove that Lawrence made his workers to mine deadly Tenebrium. For your help, I offer blessing from my homeland. Sevi mal successos, mi planto serizarbo kai tormenti via nepo sub giai branco. Translation is difficult, but it means something like, if you fail, I will plant cherry tree and haunt your grandbaby beneath branches. <laughs> Good luck. I have some further questions. I will do my best to give answers, Source Hunter. Uh, okay, what do you know about Tenebrum? Nothing natural could cause such terrible disease at mere touch. If you ask me, I say dark magic, maybe even source at its root. Fuck that foul thing! <laughs> okay, you've seen rotten action then. A terrible disease. It transformed flesh of living into flesh of corpse, while infected person still lives. Arms grow black and heavy. Legs grow black and heavy. Hair rots from scalp. Cielo help me! Oh, what memories I have. Well, what about this Lawrence? May Zalmoxis strike him down, the murderer! I have one goal in Silver Glen. To make him share in the suffering he caused. I am certain he has gain from making those miners take the tenebrium. Now I have only to prove it. Okay, well finally, how are you getting along in Silver Glen? I have not found scrap of civilization among these apes. Sebi longs for heaping plate of my famous sire mule, but the local fair support no fine food, unless squirrel meat inspire you. As for neighbors, well, those cultists would rather sacrifice supper to goddess than eat it. Okay, Nadia, I will take my leave. Alright, so this is the one quest. We're not going to handle it just yet. Uh, but we met Nadia, the widow of a miner who died from the Tenebrium disease rot. She suspects the Lawrence, the mining guild representative, knew of the risks, but still encouraged the miners to extract the ore. She also suggests that rot is related to sorcery. Now, one interesting thing is if we go to our abilities. Uh, wasn't. I could have just completely made that up then. I thought I. S oh, never mind. I was thinking that was something we put points in. Uh, but okay. So there's tenebrium damage, which is a. Uh, Totally separate thing among all the elements and poison. I could have swore you could actually handle tenebrium weapons. Oh, well, I think I just made that up. Apparently you can't. Okay. There are tenebrium weapons, though. Um, I don't know much about them. I didn't really get far enough into it. But I think that's about as far as we're going to get into the town. I think I probably shouldn't even have came here anyways. Because um, any skill stuff we're going to buy, we're probably going to get from the end of time now, not from there. Uh, we could sell stuff in Sicile. Uh So sorry about that. The episode was a little on the boring side. We got into one fight. 
But in the uh, next episode, we are going to head across this bridge and look for uh, the cabin that we're supposed to find for the White Witch. So we'll see if we can find out more about what's going on from her. Well, my camera's freaking out. Uh, we can't really see much. Uh, but okay, guys, that will be what we're doing in the next one. So I know you have a choice of where you watch your Divinity Original Sin Let's Plays. I thank you for choosing. Oh, wow, Night Sniper. Peace out, guys.